What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you ladies and gentlemen. We had last night Hurricane Otis in the Eastern Pacific Ocean around 1.30 in the morning last night, Central Time, made landfall near Acapulco, Mexico as a catastrophic and historic Category 5 hurricane with winds of 165 miles per hour. It made landfall about five miles uh, southeast of the city, so that, me uh, so that meant with the direction it was going, the eye went through right over Acapulco, and it went through the eye wall. Everything there uh, has, has happened. Now, we have not seen much images or anything like that from Acapulco after the hurricane passed. In fact, we haven't really seen much at all, which is actually rather concerning to me, primarily because of that fact, uh, the fact that we've seen, uh, from what we have seen, the images we have seen that have come out are rather dire and rather destructive. Now, we're not going to show any of these images here uh, on the channel right now, as of right now, because we're waiting for more stuff to come out as time continues to go on. But in the meantime, Otis has weakened down considerably from the last uh, uh, from the last advisory. We're down to about 80 miles per hour at this current point in time. Pressure of 980 millibars. Uh, the current location is overland in Mexico. It is just north of Alcapoco, Mexico. It's about 100 miles north northwest of Alcapoco at this current point. Pressure of 980 once again, moving at 10 miles per hour. A tropical a tropical storm warnings are still remain in, uh, in effect. They've discontinued the hurricane uh, warnings at this current point in time. If we go, go ahead and show you the cone as of right here, yeah. Once again, a tropical storm warnings remain in effect at this current point in time. So this is quite I mean, quite the um, historic event that has happened. And we'll, we're going to kind of give you a, basically a summary as to what happened because a lot of people don't realize this, but this thing literally strengthened about 115 miles per hour more. It basically strengthened from a 50-mile-per-hour tropical storm into a 165-mile-per-hour Category 5 hurricane in 24 hours. That's how quick this thing intensified. And we're going to go ahead and pull up the archive to give you an understanding of what happened. So starting at 10, uh, around 10 p.m. on Monday, Otis expected to intensify and be near hurricane strength at landfall. We were at 50 miles per hour at that current point in time. Pressure was 1,000 millibars, and it was moving at 7 miles per hour. Hurricane watches were in effect. And overall, this thing was expected to be a weak hurricane at most about uh, about 36 hours ago. Then around 4 a.m. Central Daylight Time, things started to look pretty interesting. Things started to get a lot more organized with Otis. And if we can go ahead and show you the satellite imagery, we can pull up the archive of that very quickly. We can go ahead and uh, go back and uh, get the frames about 230 uh, frames back so, uh, if we can pull that up. This is about the time where Otis started to get its act together. In fact, we'll go ahead and go back even further than that to 250 frames so that way we get a better understanding of this. Yeah, at this current point in time, Otis was just starting to get its act together, and then starting about yeah, starting about 10 o'clock last night, things really started to ramp up, and by 1 a.m., we were looking at a much more organized system than anticipated, about 24 hours ahead of landfall, and then by about 5 a.m., we were looking at a, uh, looking at continuing to see that organization, and then by about 9 a.m., we were already looking having that hurricane look on Otis as this, the really the convection expanded. We had a lot more of very cold cloud tops and a lot more convection layer up near the center of circulation at that current point. And by that point in time, this is at 7 a.m. At 7 a.m., we were at 65 miles per hour once again. But then at 10 a.m., th uh, things started to change a little bit. This got up to 70 miles per hour as this thing was nearing hurricane strength. Hurricane hunters at that current point in time were on their way out to investigate Otis as they were looking at it, and they were looking at that whole situation going on. And they found when they f uh, first came out there about one around 1 p.m., they found a, a flight level winds uh, that were matching hurricane strength already before they even got into the core of the system. So they estimated the winds to be about 80 miles per hour at that current point in time, further strengthening likely until landfall. If we can go ahead and pull up the discussion archive at that point around, around 10 a.m., this thing was expected to only be a 90 mile per hour hurricane at that current point before making landfall. Well, things were about to change because about with between one and two o'clock, they found flight level winds 
of over 120 knots, which is about 140 miles per hour, and they are finding SFMR values indicative of around cat high-end Cat 2, low-end Category 3 strength. And then drops in data confirmed that this thing was a high-end Category 2 hurricane with winds of 110 miles per hour, and the pressure went from 985 to 971 millibars. For those of you who watched my video last night, you know that this was a 14 millibar drop in the last in the, uh, that hour. Which, to put that in perspective, Hurricane Ida's pressure dropped at uh, its peak 11 millibars in an hour. So that's just for perspective, right there. And that went from a 105 to 150 mile per hour hurricane in a quick period of time. But anyway, the strengthening absolutely did not stop. From there, the structure continued to look a lot better on satellite. And it's continued to look a lot uh, more fresh and a lot more organized. And by 4 p.m., we were at a high-end Category 3 hurricane, and the pressure was at 960 millibars. Otis rapidly strengthens into a major hurricane, now expected to be a Cat 4 intensity at landfall. And then if you t take a look at the discussion, it was expected to strengthen about to 140 miles per hour before making landfall. Well... Three hours later, it blew it completely out of the water, and we were at 145 miles per hour at by that by seven o'clock. Uh, seven o'clock, Category Four hurricane now expected to be uh, near Category Five intensity at landfall. Pressure of 941 millibars. So, for context, the pressure on this is plummeting about five to six millibars per hour. And for those of you who do not know how much of a drop that is, just that is an insane pressure drop for that much time. For a hurricane, this has n this these kinds of drops require the best conditions of the season, and this was moving through 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degree water uh, warm waters. This thing was moving through ocean heat content values exceeding 150, and it was moving through uh, a very very weak wind shear, which is how it got its structure in the first place. And then 10 o'clock, the coup de gras happened. 160 miles per hour, pressure of 927. Otis rapidly intensifies to a Cat 5 hurricane. Catastrophic damage is likely where the core of the hurricane moves on shore. So that's a bit of the recap of this intensity phase, as well as with the satellite. The eye completely started to clear out by that point in time. We, by about 3 UTC, this is what it looked like, or about 10 o'clock at night. Then things continued to escalate pretty quickly as the storm started to fluctuate with its eye and all that, but that didn't matter at that current point. The hurricane made landfall as a 165 mile per hour Category 5 hurricane, the first Category 5 hurricane to make landfall on the western coast of Mexico. And I think this is the first Cat 5 to ever hit Mexico as well. Needless to say, Alcapoco is was completely obliterated in this. We haven't seen any pictures yet. And we're not going to show them just yet because we're waiting for more to come out because there are unconfirmed reports of just cataclysmic damage all over the place. But Otis isn't the only thing that we've been paying attention to. What we've also been paying attention to is because the jets, because there was a jet that was just north of Otis that really ramped up its outflow. And that's one of the biggest reasons why the models were so completely off when, when with Otis as they were. The, another thing that we've been paying attention to is Hurricane Tammy. This thing really ramped up in strength and got up to a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles per hour. Minimum central pressure was 965 millibars, and its current location was is 26.6 north and 59.3 west, moving northeast at 13 miles per hour. It is expected to remain as such before approaching Bermuda and becoming extra tropical as that transition begins. That's pretty much the cliff notes we have with Tammy at this current point in time. If we show you the discussion, it's forecast to start weakening at that point and become post-tropical or extra-tropical in the next 24 hours. So this thing really ramped up in intensity last night, just as Otis was in the Eastern Pacific. So with that out of the, with that out of the way, we got to, we got to take a look at what may be happening in the future. And with that being said, we're going to spend the last few minutes looking at some models at this current point in time. The operational models that we have will show you the European, GFS, CMC, all that, because there are some potential threats still to exist in the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the European, that's Tammy over there, and then we're looking at some potential sign of development going on around the, tw around the, uh, around the uh, late, last three days of the month, rather, 
October 20th to the 31st in the in the Caribbean Sea at that current point in time. The European does have some potential for a gyre to develop as time continues to go on, starting around the start of November, where some of the other models have also been picking up on something potentially going on with that. Next thing we're showing you is the GFS model. Here's the 0Z GFS right here. And GFS, starting around the 29th of October, is really starting to look through and see some more potential threats for the Atlantic Ocean. And according to the GFS, we do have a pretty strong low pressure system starting to organize and develop throughout the Caribbean Sea and then show signs of intensification as time continues to go on before entering the Gulf of Mexico and hitting around the Fort Myers area once again in Florida. Keep in mind, by the time this thing really starts to get its act together, we're about a week out, so don't trust this entirely. However, this has been a pretty consistent trend with the GFS at this current point in time. We go ahead and show you the 12Z uh, GFS. It's showing a similar situation, albeit much weaker and much more to the north. So it's definitely there. However, I would not be too inclined to trust it just yet because the earliest we're indicating is about six days out. So that's the GFS. Next thing we're showing you is the CMC model. CMC has been pretty interesting and it's been pretty consistent to say at the very least. And the CMC is showing some potential signs of something happening off the coast of Mexico, off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula at the Zero Z, but not much other than that compared to that, that of the GFS. And then with the 12Z run, similar situation with that, although the CMC is more confident that a gyre will once again develop around late October in the next few days and then show signs of organization and development as it approaches Cuba as a tropical storm and then Florida as either a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane that is according to the CMC at this current point. A lot of stuff has really been going on over the last 24 hours, so it, anything can happen at this point. That's pretty much what Otis has been teaching us right here. As for the nav gem, the nav gem run's been pretty non-existent to say at the very least, so I'm not going to even bother touching that at this current point. And with that being said, really, just a lot of stuff has happened once again over the last 24 hours. We had... Basically, a tropical storm intensified into a Category 5 hurricane in a matter of 24 hours. And then this Category 5 hurricane made landfall in a place that never saw it before. And based off of the limited information we have, catastrophic damage has occurred. So we'll keep you updated on this story as time continues to progress. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.